Hello, and welcome to the Groovy Writer Podcast, where we explore how to find your writing groove, regardless of your circumstances. I'm your host, author and MFA instructor, Nicole McGinnis. Hi, everyone, and welcome back to the podcast. I took a week off last week for a sort of spring break because I just had classes ending and classes starting and my schedule was pretty packed and I thought, yep, I'm going to, rather than rush a podcast episode, I'm going to go ahead and take a week off. Well, it ended up that I liked that so much that I'm actually going to move at this point to an unscheduled format. I was new to podcasting when I started this podcast, and I'm still pretty new, but more than a dozen episodes in, I've learned a few things. And because this is a hobby for me and something I do because I really enjoy it and because I'm talking about things that I tend to see come up over and over and over again with my writing students, I want to keep it fun and I want to keep it not necessarily unstructured format wise, but scheduling wise, I don't want to be bound to a schedule like I've been doing every Monday. I don't want to be bound to a schedule that makes me feel like it's a have to. As we know, as writers, we are so often trying to battle the have to's and the shoulds in our lives. And I am really enjoying doing this podcast. And that week off, which I hadn't really expected to take, but it made me feel a whole new enthusiasm. It made me feel refreshed. And the thought of, okay, now I'm going to go back to my weekly schedule kind of made me have that heavy sort of feeling. So I'm not going to do it. It's a hobby. It's an enjoyment thing for me. It's something that I hope encourages you and encourages just creative people in general, not necessarily writers, although it is, of course, the groovy writer. So it's very writer focused. So anyway, you'll see new episodes when you see new episodes. Maybe I'll, you know, get crazy one week and post two episodes. Who knows? Or maybe it'll be a couple weeks between episodes. So keep an eye on that. Also, I have put the podcast on YouTube, just in audio format. It's not a video. I also like to do this podcast in my jammies and with no makeup on and my hair a mess, just wherever the day happens to find me. And I really don't want that on the internet forever and ever in video format. So it's going to be, it is actually on YouTube right now. And I'm catching up with loading the episodes. I think I'm up to episode eight. No, episode nine, I think. So that takes a little bit of work to get those on there, but not too bad. Okay, so here we are at today's episode. This is something I've been thinking about for several weeks. Writing spaces, writing places, the settings in which we write, our, we do our best work. This morning, I was out working on my front yard. It's spring. There's spring cleanup to do. There's leaves to pick up. There's planters to be cleaned up and soil to be refreshed. And I was out in my front yard working and a neighbor drove by and I I didn't even know he was there, but I heard, hey, Nicole. And I looked up. He leaned out his window and he said, hey, how you doing? And we were chatting for a bit and he said, hey, you wouldn't happen to want to sell that old travel trailer you have parked at the back of your property, would you? And I basically laughed and said, get in line. For anyone who follows me on Instagram, my personal account, which is Nicole McGinnis author, not the groovy writer, which is also an account. I posted not too long ago a picture of my funky little old pink trailer that was given to me uh, over a decade ago. It was originally a green hunting trailer and it had been used for camping and hunting and the people were moving and didn't want it and basically said, hey, you, you can have this. So I got inspired to repaint it. It was just kind of um, a drab green. It wasn't very charming. And it's from, I thought at the time it was from the 1970s, but further research has shown that it's actually from the 80s. I have not yet pinned down the exact year, but it's an old Cerro Scotty for anyone who's familiar with vintage trailers, which are of course all the rage these days, right? At the time they weren't so much all the rage, but I just thought it had potential and it was strange and it was cute. And I just thought, that's a cool little space. 
That's a space where I could write, I could hang out, maybe even camp. Well, as it turns out, it has basically been storage for the past decade. It's where I put my winter clothes when I bring out my spring wardrobe and where I put my spring clothes when I bring out my winter wardrobe. I keep everything in big Rubbermaid tubs and it just saves my closets from getting crowded and cramped. And so as a result, it hasn't really been used, so it hasn't been getting worn down, but it has been sort of sitting out and being used as storage and not being used as the creative space that I originally intended it for when I incidentally did paint it pink. I like to think it's sort of a dusty rose pink and not a completely glaring, awful neon pink, but nevertheless, it is a funky pink trailer that was once a green hunting trailer. All right, so long story short, I'm in the front yard and I basically told my neighbor, hey, get in line because he is literally the fourth or fifth person over the years who has approached me wanting to buy this trailer. And I'm seeing an uptick in that because again, if you're at all into this sort of thing, you know that vintage trailers are just huge. Speaking of YouTube, people have videos of tearing them out completely, refurbishing them because often they have damage, like mine has water damage. It's not so bad that you can't be inside of it and I'm still making it cute and refurbishing it and everything. But it's still, if I wanted to get serious about this, I would have to tear the entire back panel out and the windows and really have it rebuilt, which I don't think I'll do because just time and money, but we'll see. So it made me think, it made me kind of chuckle because I had been thinking of doing this episode anyway, and I have been working on this trailer. I've gotten everything out of it. I've been cleaning it out and really disinfecting. One of the things we worry about in Arizona is hantavirus. So anything that has been sitting out on a prairie, or mine is right next to the National Forest right now at the back of my property, you know, critters like to get in during the winter. They like to make a shelter and there are some signs of critters in here. So I've been, you know, wearing super heavy duty painters masks and disinfecting and bleaching and just really trying to get it cleaned up with the ultimate goal of it being, I said long story short, but it's actually taking me a while to get to the point here, with the ultimate goal, once again, after all these years of having it be a writing space. Now, I actually have a couple of good writing spaces in my home. And where I work and teach and write depends a lot on the time of year. The light hits differently at different times of year. I can heat some of those spaces more easily and effectively in the winter when it gets really cold here, often uh, sometimes below zero. I live in northern Arizona, so we're at 7,000 foot altitude. We get snow, it gets really cold, and it commonly freezes during the winter. So light, heat, comfort. And then of course, in the summer, when it's hotter, I want to be where the breezes are and where the light's not too bright. So this is really common. Writing is, as we know, an endeavor where we sit, typically, sometimes pace, if you're like me, in a spot and we work. And it's really nice if the spot can be fairly comfortable. Over the years, I have written at kitchen tables in the middle of a busy household. When I was young, I used to be able to write with music on and the TV on and chaos all around. And when you have little kids, you definitely have to do that. So depending on where you are in life, you're going to probably find that there are different places where you want to and or have to write. Sometimes your options are limited. If you live in a little apartment, for example, maybe you're a student or you're just starting out in life and in writing, you might find that you need to get out. You need to get to a cafe, which of course has been really tough this past year. It's something I've thought about a lot, actually. Wow, I miss occasionally going into a coffee shop, a bookstore, which is not my normal place I love to write, but every once in a while, it was really nice to get out and just go get a coffee, bring my laptop, sit at a table and do some work, do some people watching, and just be out and about surrounded by books, for example, in a couple of my favorite bookstores in Flagstaff. So for those who do like to write out and about in the world, among people, and again, when I was a college student, high school student, college student, into my 20s, I really loved to write in a cafe, in a coffee shop, somewhere where there were people, there was activity, you can hear interesting conversations, you can get inspired just by the people you see around you. And I wasn't bothered by that. Now, you know, as an almost empty nester writer, I find I really like to have places where it's very quiet. There are little to no distractions. 
and I talked about this in a previous episode not too long ago, about how easy it is to get distracted. You can be sitting at home and all of a sudden, oh, I think I'll go clean out the closet, speaking of closets, or I think I'll go uh, empty the dishwasher, or I better vacuum that rug in the living room. It's so easy to get to a place where we're doing anything but writing. And so I think that's one of the appeals now for me of getting back to this trailer where there are very few distractions here. It's about eight feet by 12 feet. I just measured it because I needed to get a tarp for it. Something like that. It's really small. It has a little table. It has two little sitting areas that can be transformed into a bed if you want to sleep. You take the table out. It has a little galley, so it has a a little refrigerator and a little sink and a little propane stove and funky little storage cabinets everywhere. It's really cute, but it's really small, and so there really aren't too many distractions. Once I'm set up here with my computer, and this is the first time I have brought my computer out here and recorded, and I am right now sitting in this trailer because I thought it would sort of inspire me with this episode. Um, Once I do that, There really aren't too many distractions, and I do find that distractions over the years have become more and more of an issue. One of the things that I love about working with writing students all over the country, all over the world occasionally, because I do have international students occasionally as well, is that I get to hear about their situations. I get to hear about where they write, what time of day, what sort of uh, living situation they have, what sort of distractions they have to either deal with or try to get away from in order to write. And it's really interesting to get a sense of the different ways people go about getting into that creative mode that we all need to get into to write. There's a huge variety. And I also think it's interesting to think about how the different spaces in which we've written over the years, for those of us who have been doing this for years and or decades, how they have affected our writing. I have lived in several different places between California and Arizona since I was little. And I do think my writing was affected by the ocean when I lived just about a mile, less than a mile, I guess, from the ocean in Santa Cruz, California, which was just such a beautiful setting. I think it was affected differently than it was when I lived up north in the San Francisco Bay Area, and then when I moved to northern Arizona and I was in a mountain environment. Things are different. So much natural beauty surrounds us here as well, but it's not the ocean. It's the mountains. It's snow in the winter. It's beautiful monsoon flowers in the summer, but it's different. And it has inspired me to write different types of fiction. So I think where we choose, or at times are maybe forced to write, if we really don't have a lot of options, can have a huge effect on the type of literature that we produce. That's definitely been the case for me. And I would love to hear from any of you who care to reach out, either by commenting on my website or the Groovy Writer on Instagram or in a YouTube comment, how your writing space, your writing place has influenced your work as a writer, whether you love it, whether you find you want to make some changes, as I'm doing now with this little funky travel trailer. And I look forward to hearing how the acoustics are in here. It's a little bit of a, it's like a a little cave, so they might be a little bit echoey, but that's okay. It's all experimentation with this podcast. But sometimes, as is the case with me right now, when you need to make a change, it's not a big change. I don't have to sell my house and move somewhere else. I have this strange little trailer and I can fix it up, which is a creative outlet that I also love, a non-writing creative outlet. And I'm going to do a future episode on that as well. But it's a small change. Some might even think it's a bit of a silly change, but it's amazing how changing your location, even if it's just by a few yards can make a big difference in our attitude toward our writing, the type of thoughts and ideas that arise in a different space. So I wonder about people who do writing retreats frequently, for example. I have never been a big retreat person. Part of that is because I've had kids and I've had responsibilities and work and it's hard to get away. I know that's probably not much of an excuse. I have gone for weekends and written in different locations when I've been on vacation over the years, but I'm not an actual writing retreat person. I've taught at them, except for a few times, in which case I've really enjoyed them. But I wonder about people who frequent 
writing retreats or make their own retreats by going and renting a room and writing for however many days straight. It sounds on one hand very appealing and on another hand, I'm not sure how well I do it. So I would love to hear from you. Talk to me about how you write and most importantly, where you write. Do you have a dedicated space in your home? Do you tend to move about? Do you have to be really flexible, such as writing on public transportation? on your way to and from work, for example, which is not an uncommon situation. Do you write more on the go? And do you create well that way, maybe because of the movement and having people around and noise, etc.? Or do you really find that you need to have a more of a grounded situation where you have a desk set up, you have your things where you want them, you can close the door to a little room or whatever it is, or maybe you have a grand office Maybe you have an office in your home. Maybe you have an office near your home. I had an office in downtown Flagstaff for years because I lived a ways out of town and needed to drive my kids into school every day. And rather than spend all that time on the interstate, I thought, you know what, I'm going to get an office in an old historical building. And it was reasonable and it was doable. It saved the gas, it saved the wear and tear on the vehicles. And that was great. And then when I didn't need to be in town anymore every day, I decided to not have that office anymore. But for the time being, it was great. It was, again, a dedicated space for me to teach and to write. And I really enjoyed that. So I'm fascinated by how different writers do it and how maybe you've had to change things up this past year with so many things closed, a relative lack of availability of public spaces. For those of you who really do like to be out and about more when you write, I'm fascinated by that. So please do share. Let me know what works for you, what doesn't, and I will provide an update on the trailer situation. I'm hoping to get it more comfortable and do some painting and, and make it even funkier. So I'm looking forward to that. And before I go, I want to be sure to not forget the Daily Groove. Today's Daily Groove comes to us fairly predictably, I think, from Virginia Woolf, who wrote in A Room of One's Own, quote, a woman must have money and a room of her own if she is to write fiction, unquote. Of course, this applies not just to women. It applies to anyone who wants to write. And I don't think you have to have a room of your own. Money definitely helps. But I think it's it's interesting how many people do need to have that dedicated space. And so in a way, this little funky travel trailer is a room of my own where I can really dedicate it to coming out here and sitting and thinking and writing and maybe even recording if the audio quality isn't too horrible. So that's about it for today. I'll see you around. Look for a new episode whenever it's posted. Take care and happy writing. Thanks for listening to this episode of the Groovy Writer Podcast. You can connect with the podcast on my website at nicolemcinnis.com and on Instagram at the Groovy Writer. The intro and outro music is Retro by Wayne Jones. Until next time, write on, Groovy Writers. Write on.